Barack Obama was the first African-American office holder to gain national attention who did not come out of the civil rights era. What does that generational and cultural divide mean among black politicians? Well, in his first play in 27 years, that's the conflict examined by Richard Wesley, who back in the 70s wrote The Mighty Gents about a street gang in Newark, and a decade later, The Talented Tenth about Howard University alumni caught between where they come from and where success is taking them. Well, Wesley's new play is called Autumn. It's being presented by the Billy Holiday Theater, and it runs through November 6th at LIU's Cumble Theater. It tells the story of a mayor who's trying to step up to governor, and Mr. Mayor is here with us now, the former <laughs> Jerome Preston Bates, seen on Broadway in Seven Guitars. Welcome to BK Live, sir. Good morning. Welcome. Um, thank you for your welcome. <laughs> You're welcome to our welcome. And we also have another for the Keithia Dalco. Yes, hi. Thank you for nice being here. You. She's a professional me. stage actress, and she's on the career, and she's at the table now. I'm glad to be here. Good. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Thank you so much, both of you. Yes. Yeah, uh, we were talking in the hallway a little bit about how this is an appropriate place play for this political season. Uh, Jerome, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's very timely for this political season. Uh, we, uh, we look at Frank Lonely, who's supposedly uh, there to serve the people. Uh, not supposedly, but he is there to serve yes, the people. Uh, and he's very powerful, and he's very influential, and uh, I guess that parallels with uh, uh, the two candidates we have now. Very <laughs> powerful, very influential, and we'll see if they serve the people. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So there's a conflict here. Greg alluded to the conflict, or maybe I did, but there's the mayor who wants to take the next step up the ladder, but then the young upstart gets right. in the way. Yeah. And what's your relationship um, to that? I, I play um, Trisha Johnson. I basically represent the, the people, yeah. the voice of the people, the people that's asking for those who represent them to actually do what they're supposed to do for the people and not for self, as we, which is often our conflict yeah. um, in in, in the play. So that's who um, I play and who Trisha Johnson is. She's um, a young, um, struggling mother who's basically trying to get help to take care of herself, her four kids, and then her relatives' kids that she's taking care of. So there's there's just a lot of going on. We have this um, dichotomy of, um, one, is she trying to basically get over on the system, or is she actually just asking the system to do what they're supposed to do for the people. And that's um, where Trisha Johnson comes in with, with Frank. She does it quite well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. What else attracted you, you to this play and, you know, the themes that go on in it? It's at the Billy Holiday Theater. Yes. We're really interested in the production, too, and uh, what, sort, what sort of things attracted you to this production? Uh, Richard Wesley uh, just really, I remember seeing one of his first plays at Morehouse College when I was in school uh, back in the day, and Samuel L. Jackson was, was, was starring in it. It was called The Black Terror. And one of my first plays, when I first came back to New York, was The Sirens, which uh, Richard had wrote as well, and this was a play I did in Newark. And, uh, and then the cast and the ensemble that was uh, created around this production. And, and the fact that to get a chance to do it at the Billy Holiday, where I got one of my first starts when I started out in my career. Uh, I actually used to live about three blocks from here, Fort Greene Place, so I could walk up to the How Billy Holiday. How much was right there? <laughs> oh, I know, right? Maybe 300 <laughs> a month, maybe, I'm something sure. like that. <laughs> yeah, that was before, you know, before everything changed. Right. And, but uh, but uh, I, I think the writer, uh, the fact that the Billy Holiday was doing it, and then the, it was an exciting team of artists that was uh, brought in to uh, to do this leg of it. We had uh, done a previous uh, uh, presentation of it at, at Crossroads Theater in New Brunswick back in 2015, I believe. Yeah. And so, but uh, that that that's what brought me to it. That's what excited me about it. So we are pretty much political junkies around here. We watch all the debates <laughs> sure. and all that. Just, so I wondered if you guys have been more sucked in as the art imitates life kind of thing, especially your character. Mm -hmm. Like if it's change your perspective or giving you a different way of seeing the way that the presidential candidates are going back and forth now. Um, definitely. I mean, this this candidates in this presidential debates and watching things on TV, we often see that a lot of things have been more so personal. I know from, from my point of view of things that I've heard or, or looked at and not as much as so focusing on a lot of the issues that we should be speaking about. And so that was that was a really um, telling thing to me that kind of, and which goes into who his character is. He's dealing with a lot of personal issues and my character is dealing with a lot of personal issues. So at one point, it, you get so far away from the idea of what you're supposed to be there for, which is the policy 
politics and, and creating um, things that's going to better America, that you often start to focus on just the personal issues. And so I want us to get back to the to the basics of what it's supposed to be yeah. about, <laughs> which is <laughs> often, no, you have a, thank you, Lakeith, you have a president. I mean, Jerome, the uh, play kind of deals with the generational divide. What's the generational divide that's uh, addressed in Autumn? Well, we have a character named Ronald who's up and coming. Uh, uh, he's an assemblyman at the time. And uh, that's the generation divide. My character represents kind of the old school. Right. Um, it's, it's almost like you can the say the marching. Those yes. Guys yes, 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 they, they, yes mm. they will stand and say that I was there with Dr. King. Right. I was that generation that helped bring uh, his dream into fruition for the people. Ronald represents uh, back to a place of serving the people, coming from a pure heart, uh, wanting to serve the people, wanting to be there for the people. I believe Frank started out like right, that, right. wanted to serve the people. Right. wanted to be there for the people and and he was there for the people but I think power corrupts and pride comes before the fall yeah. and uh, so not only does it deal with his regime and everything that he's doing in terms of his office but it deals with his relationships his relationship with his wife mm -hmm. his relationship obviously the generation uh, uh, divide with Ronald his relationship with the um, the governor who's a, 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 a Caucasian um, um, a, a, a female uh, that's the governor at the time and uh, and it and it, and, and it focuses on, on so many other things uh, young single mothers just trying to uh, make it for their kids two or three jobs uh, uh, young men who's who are being unjustifiably stopped and frisked young men who feel they have to have a, a gun because of the neighborhood that they live in they got to have this weapon and things like that. So, uh, but back to your point, the generation divide is uh, the young man who said, "No, I don't want to do it your way, Frank. Right. I don't want." He 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 sees something that he wants to do different. But before he came to that point, he was uh, under Frank's wing, under Frank's tutelage, under Frank's tutoring, mm -hmm. under Frank's guidance. You know, and uh, he's come to a point where. Now they're. I want. I'm going to get my own. Yeah, so, <laughs> Make my own uh, path. So <laughs> he's the master. But he. But yes. he. Uh, he. He's Frank. And when Frank started out, yeah. you know. But power. And is that that does that thing to you? A <laughs> scary thing. Does he become Frank in the future, or does he actually create and become something right. totally different? Right. And that's yeah. that type of. Um, but I guess that's so much of the tension that we see playing out in the real world right, right. now when mm -hmm. people from Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. create a movement that says, we don't have a figurehead. We are all the movement. Right. There's mm -hmm. no one person mm -hmm. to assassinate or mm -hmm. take right. down or mm -hmm. put all of this pressure on, whereas the old vanguard was like, had, I'm the standard bearer. I'm right. the guy who made the lunch counters mm -hmm. equal and mm -hmm. marched there. So I wonder if that seeps into the play. Uh, yes. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? I, I, I mean, I, <laughs> just from, from, from what you, you've said and about with Black Lives Matter and about how older politics were done, yeah. I'm sure that you have some veterans now like, like, oh, why are they doing it this way? Or right. So basically, I think what Ronald, the younger character, and what his character is basically saying that I have a different way of doing it. And um, the older representative being able to step back and be like, my way is not always the mm -hmm. right way, because this is a new generation. It's a different time. And the Black Lives Matter is moving is in a time where technology and, and, and we have phones where everyone has access to basically showing that what we are saying is happening is actually happening. There is tangible proof, and they did not have that in that time. So we have the movement can grow and be this bigger beast because of that, which you have to adjust for the times in order to get new, new things to happen. So I think that's what's happening. And what Ronald was trying to get into his head, but his hubris, <laughs> his pride, does not allow that to, to see That's, through. <laughs> do you have a favorite uh, part or line in the play? Uh, <laughs> a lot of beautiful lines. You, you, you better figure out something to do with those hands or you'll be dead before God gets the news. <laughs> That's a line in the play. Not yes. That's a line in the play. I just wanted to be That wasn't my line for today. That's a line in the play. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. I'm always interested. Oh, go ahead. It's full of so many one-liners, yeah. so many great one-liners. Uh, and what's your favorite? Um... Let me see. There's so many. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was out, um, always my favorite. Uh, out, can I say a curse word? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't know if I can. I'll, <laughs> I'll talk to your narrow anyway. I 
I can't see it. Never mind. And you see, my my you'll have to come see it. She 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 speaks and she's very very blunt. And um, taking on this role and and Walter's direction and um, Richard's words really gave me a new empathy for Mm -hmm. these hundreds of Trishas that I see on the street every day. Those singer mothers on the train. I know being a southern woman, like there's certain things that like coming here to the north is like very jarring to me. (laughs) But um, just finding a way to be um, empathetic to my character, Mm -hmm. I found a whole new appreciation for some of the things that these women have to go through. My character is basically driven to basically a psychotic breakdown Mm -hmm. because of the stress and not having the tools, the adequate tools in order order to change her life and her children's lives. Mm -hmm. And that is a lot of things that's going on right here, which creates then generational curses, Mm -hmm. is what I call it. So the same issues that she has now is now being basically fed into her children. Mm -hmm. And so I have a brand, a whole new insight when I see those mothers um, on the train cursing yeah. out their kids or being stressed out or in line trying to get food stamps yeah. or something like that. It's like, do they actually have the tools right. um, to so basically you know that, get you know out, do yeah. to do better? You know better, you do better, right. you know? So. I'm excited about this time and I'm excited about this piece and, and, and what it's saying and high parallels with what's going on today. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been paying closer attention to the debates well, uh, now. Well, than... I wanted to know <laughs> what well do you go to to draw from your thing? Like, I remember I was home in Chicago right. during Thanksgiving last year and I saw Jesse Jackson get shouted down mm-hmm. when he was in front of a group of people who were protesting oh, over wow. the shooting mm-hmm. of an unarmed black man in Chicago Mm -hmm. and the new school was saying we don't want to hear from you Mm -hmm. like you you had your time step aside you Mm -hmm. just show up when the cameras here and all Mm -hmm. these other criticisms so I wondered where you draw from Well, I draw from you know one of the one of the things I drew from is I I thought of the Sharp James and the Cory Booker uh, situation in New York Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Sharp James came up from the old regime he was part of probably uh, the Kenneth Gibson Mm -hmm. uh, 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 you know cabinet and and Cory Booker came into the neighborhood and he moved into the projects. College boy. And, yeah, yes. he's college boy, Ivy League education yeah. and everything. And so I was able to tune into that story and to see what was the dynamics of that. The first time Cory ran against uh, Sharp James, he didn't win. But the second time he did. But the thing about it, Sharp James had it, you know, he, he had it down. He had done uh, as much as he did for Newark. He had uh, built, completely uh, built downtown and brought in some things like the Prudential Center and, yes. and the local, uh, you know, baseball, uh, semi-pro baseball team and a lot of other things he had done. So I draw from that and, and I'm more in tune now to politics and, and uh, the debate and what's going on. My, my wife is just, she's a 24-hour CNN person. Yeah. So <laughs> you, can, you can almost can't go to any other station. And it has really, uh, before that politics, you know, it, it, it you know, I, I, I voted, but I didn't know the ins and the outs. Yeah. You know, I, I know what was right and wrong and I, what I felt was right for our people. But uh, this has really, uh, to do this research has really uh, made me more in tune with what's going on today. Yes, and, uh, and, 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 and Frank represents power and authority, a place of position, a place of almost being uh, above uh, 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 of, of the law in a way, or above any authority telling him any different. Um, he represents that stubborn uh, old uh, school uh, regime. Yeah. Uh, that he feels he can't be moved and he knows everything. He's got it all together. Mm-hmm. But I also try to give him a, ten, a, a tenure of, of humanity, uh, a, a tenure of compassion, and, and, my, and his own sense of, of reality. And he's living in his own reality. Mm-hmm. As we've seen their code Definitely. over and over in this in this election, and I won't. Definitely, <laughs> a lot of realities. But, are. but I'm, ex- I'm excited about this play, and I'm so excited sad. about uh, what's go- coming out of the restoration and yeah. the Billy Holiday yes. Theater. Last year, we had the opportunity to do Twelve Angry Men, mm-hmm. and not based on the actual movie or the play Twelve Angry Men, but a, a book about uh, African American men, twelve who were unjustifiably stopped and frisked, mm-hmm. and we brought in so many wonderful players, uh, Roscoe Orman from Sesame Street. Uh, we had uh, um, uh, Denzel Washington's son from Ballers, uh, John Ingalls from Good, Good, Time, Good uh-huh. Times. Uh, there were people. There were just wonderful actors. Uh, the gentleman that would play opposite Chaz Moldman and um, 
and uh, get on up. And we just had so many wonderful uh, actors. The Roger Robinson, one of the Tony Award winners from uh, Joe Turner's Coming On, the one that actually uh, President Obama attended. Well, listen, and, uh, 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 there's no slouches in this production. <laughs> <laughs> right, so tell us how we can get tickets to Autumn. Okay, you can uh, definitely you can get tickets by going to the website um, www.thebillyholiday.org, um, where you can purchase tickets and also look at the dates and the times. Well, we are very much looking forward to seeing Autumn. We urge all our viewers to do the same, and we really want to thank you two for being here. We're really looking forward to seeing you at the Billy Holiday Theater and. Thank you very much Thank for being for here on BK us. Live. We really appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. Autumn yeah. is the play. In the house. Absolutely. <laughs> in the house. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here.